Welcome to another Q&A session. The support group in August was cancelled due to the summer holidays. Because of this, I decided to do another Q&A support video on the road because I was determined not to miss out altogether for another month. I have used St James's Park Lake as a backdrop for this Q&A support video. In the far background is the London Eye with the horse guards to the left of that and the trees of St James's Park in the immediate foreground. But what I did do is keep it within the confines of a normal South White session where I had the things I would normally have had in Roxall. But the only difference was that I was not in Roxall, I was in London. And as we see here, I'll just describe very briefly the things in the photo. And we've got a packet of crisps and cakes and pastries and cheese and we got fruit and normally I'd have a proper cup of coffee but of course I could have to take it with me in the can on this particular occasion and um, and uh, like I said at the beginning you know it's like I was like when I'm determined I'm like I'm really determined and I have to do it anyway e even though I'm thinking damn it Caroline do you have to cancel it all the time but um, anyway, so anyway, so this is the sorts of things that I that I had and I would have had if I'd have been in the in the usual location. Okay, so now we come to the the question and answer part of the video and. Um, the first question is how does a person with autism deal with anxiety issues so well I am a person with autism and I'm currently going through those kind of things so uh, the way I deal with it is going somewhere that, um, that, that that is calming to me or doing something I like to do so I like taking photographs so I find that to be quite a calming and relaxing thing to do and then um and plus also i like going somewhere like with a lake or by the sea or somewhere like that and that leads very nicely into the second question that leads um into the second question 1a what is an autistic person's fascination for water? Well, a little bit as I've just touched on in question one, I find water to be a calming thing, so if I'm really het up and things I find it, I, f I relax more quickly if there's water nearby because it gives me something to look at, or look at the ducks or look at the sea or take photos of it and things like that, so... For me, that's that's why um, I'm fascinated by water. <laughs> Question two then. How does a person with autism deal with the loss of a loved one? Well, I was 12 when um, my dad died and... Um, because I was in school, I never got to see him before he died. Because when I left to go to school, he was um, still getting ready. So by the time he died, I was in school. The first I had heard of it was was when I was um, was when the message got passed on to me. Uh, I will not say who it was or any of that kind of thing. But all I'll say is that. The first thing that um, I felt was shock and disorientation and um, is this really true and how am I supposed to get over this and it took me a long time to get over it 
and um, just to say that um, if I didn't have the autism then uh, it probably wouldn't have taken me quite as long to get over dad's passing the fact that I've got autism means it will take me longer for things like that and the shock will hit a bit harder I mean everybody feels a shock when when a loved one or member of any family passes but um, it's doubly so when there's autism to consider because I mean my mum had a real dilemma she got there just after he died she then had a real dilemma because she's she 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 then had to think okay what do I what do I do here do I do I phone the other son and get him to pass the message on or do I or do I tell him myself or you know it was all going through mum's head what do I do for the best for Charles for his autism and all of those kinds of things go through your mind when you're di when whilst at the same time trying to for the news to sink in yourself so that that was what she went through and then of course when I did get told it I then went th I then went through the shock as I explained uh, and um eventually I did and I had to attend the funeral and and um but I felt like I had to say something at the funeral from my perspective as to what it was like for me to lose a to lose a father, so that's why I, I got up in, in the church full of people and said all and said those things because I felt I had to. I had to pretty well grow up pretty quick and um, I've still got photographs and and memories and things like that and I felt like as I I felt that um, talking about him and looking at photographs of him helped me deal with it because it's I'm talking about the good times we had together and that and that I felt was a uh, a good way of dealing with the shock of, of, of him dying so question three then why is an autistic person sensitive to change well anyone with autism including me have to do um, do things in a certain order and a certain structure and they have routine and of course if that routine gets broken then uh, then they don't like it and in mind the same I I never like I've never liked it when when the way that I'm doing things suddenly gets changed and I wonder why And, um, and moving on to the last question, why does it take a person with autism longer to adapt? Is because um, it's because they've been so used to doing it before. It's because they've been so used to doing it the way they were doing it, and then suddenly it change, and then they've got to adapt and all over again. So that's to an extent why it takes an autism a person with autism longer to adapt if the sudden change because they're used to the, w the, th the way it was before and then it changes and they've got to and it takes them longer to get used to those changes <laughs>